In this video, I'm gonna give you some ideas of what you can do after the campaign in Diablo 4. Now, by the time you've beaten the campaign, you should probably be around level 50, and I think you will actually need to be level 50 to do the first major thing to go into the campaign and unlock the Paragon board, which is alongside your skill tree, which will start a new progression path. You will have a first one that you need to complete for your actual class, and once you complete this, it will open up to a massive one that you get to decide. These ones right now are specific to each class, I think. And this only happens at level 50. I think another thing that happens at level 50 is the world tier statue, the one in Kyovashad. Kyovashad right over here, if you go just to the northeast, you'll see the world tier statue right over here. This is a statue where you can change the difficulty of your game. During the campaign, you're only allowed to select tier one and tier two, which is adventurer and veteran, but nightmare will be locked because you have to complete the campaign and then you have to, in veteran difficulty tier two, have to complete the Cathedral of Light Capstone Dungeon. So in Veteran 2 difficulty, you're gonna go from the statue over here. The dungeon that they're talking about is just north. It's in this cathedral right over here. It's literally just right there. So you're gonna go from the tier statue just there. Once you've done that, you will be able to come back to the statue here and unlock the Nightmare Mode difficulty tier three. This is recommended for levels 50 to 70. However, you're probably not gonna be able to do anything in Nightmare difficulty unless you have a really good build with really fleshed out items and legendaries for your character already. But within Nightmare mode, you will be getting the sacred items and unique items dropping from different things. Nightmare sigils can drop that unseal the Nightmare dungeons, which I'll talk about later on. I believe this only happens when you have Nightmare difficulty selected. The same is for the new hell tides that can appear across Sanctuary, which if I go ahead and I swap to World Tier 3 difficulty, you should see if I open up my map, the hell tides are actually indicated by these red areas. So you can see there's like dark red over here. I'm not talking about like the red over there or over there. These are PVP zones. So you can actually do PVP stuff in these two zones, this one here and this one at the bottom of the map. But the hell tides are these dark red areas where you'll fight monsters and basically collect a currency that when you have enough of the currency, you'll be able to open up special chests within those areas. And these chests are called tortured gifts and they will have a specific symbol of what's included in the chest. So some of them might have like something like a amulet or boots or a chest plate. And that means when you open up that chest, you'll get a guaranteed drop for that item that you that it shows. So if it says an amulet, you're gonna get a legendary amulet from that chest. So this is a great way to hunt for specific items. They generally run for an hour at a time in these different areas. Nightmare difficulty also has the chance of spawning champion monsters that have damage resistance auras and will probably drop better loot as well. In general, it gives you double experience for all the monsters you defeat. Monsters are a lot stronger and they come with, you know, more gold and, you know, more and more damage to you means they, they overcome 20% of your resistance. If you feel like you're up for the challenge and you feel like you're strong enough, go ahead and give those things a shot. But I actually recommend going into veteran tier two and doing the whispers of the dead system. Now, if I zoom out on the map here and I go to the very bottom right region over here, Hawazar, and if we go to the top right section of Hawazar, you see here we have the Tree of Whispers. You most likely came here for your for your quest. Now, this is a system very similar to like how bounties worked in Diablo 3, I think. So the Tree of Whispers is going to basically give you this kind of objective of collecting grim favors. And for every 10 that you collect, or at least you can see 10 in my bar over here, I'm just missing the final one you will pick a reward and get a reward. And those rewards can often include the nightmare sigils to unlock the nightmare dungeons. Now, in order to track these grim favors around the map, you'll actually see them as these icons that are pretty much everywhere now. Not the blue ones, these are obviously the waypoints, but like things like this over here, this one there, that one there, right? So you'll see there is a difference. This one over here is usually like a very single-minded objective. It gives you a time how long it's gonna be around for, an hour and 10 minutes. And the reward here for doing this one is one grim favor. So if I did this one right now, it would complete all my grim favors for the Whispers of the Dead. You can also track this at any time when you have your map open at the bottom right. You don't actually have to go hover over the tree to see how many you still need. So these ones with the skull and the knife in it will always give you one grim favor. But if you want to collect more grim favors with doing less tasks, but like more difficult tasks or more time consuming tasks, you can do something like this one over here. You can see this icon, this is what it looks like. These ones will always give you three grim favors. 
And you can see generally in a, in the game, they'll be in a, like an area. They're all around there. They're all around there. There's some around here. There's some up here too. And the ones that award the most Grim Favors actually awards five Grim Favors. And these are the dungeons. So these fire dungeons, these are not to be confused with nightmare dungeons. And when you complete them, you are still able to unlock the aspect of power that's within it. The ones that you collect for, for the Codex of Power, these things over here. So you will get that reward as well as your five Grim Favors for completing that dungeon. Now the dungeon itself will not actually be any different because of the event. It will just give you the five Grim Favors and act as a normal dungeon. Now the Whispers of the Dead is probably the first thing you're going to jump into at max level. Apart from like, you know, doing the other stuff like doing your collectibles and stuff like that to, to get yourself those extra skill points and extra potions. And work your way up to getting Paragon points eventually one day when you can finish all of these. So here's one of the icons on my map. This is just a hideaway. So we killed all the enemies there and then we completed the little quest and we got our Grim Favor. And you can see on the map here, it will tell you to return to the Tree of Whispers to claim your reward. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that. At this point, you'll also notice that all of the other events will no longer be available until you hand in your Grim Favors to get the reward. So you just run up to the tree, speak to it, and you can pick between three options. These options are always different. Earlier, I had amulet, but you can see there's one for chest plates, one for leg guards, and one for two-handed weapons. We're going to try our luck with leg guards and accept, and this will give you a bunch of different things. It's not only leg guards, but you will get a ton of different things. So you can see here, it gave 115,000 experience. It's a great XP form too. And then when you open up the cache in your inventory, it will drop the different items. Now, earlier I actually got two legendaries, but you'll see the one legendary you guaranteed to get is for the, the item that the chest was for. This is also how you will get your glyphs, which are a system that you upgrade through. Similar to the legendary gems in Diablo 3, glyphs are things that work on your paragons, which go into these slots over here, which you have here. And you can upgrade these by doing nightmare dungeons. Basically think of these as extra effects that you can add to your character to make you more strong. Now let's talk about Nightmare Dungeons. Now I haven't really done one yet, but I do know that in World Tier 3, when you do the Tree of Whispers and you get the reward, you'll be able to have a chance to get a Nightmare Sigil, which will basically guide you to one of the dungeons in the map. These are dungeons, these things over here. Now you will go to the dungeon as normal. Let's say you have a Nightmare Sigil for the Shadowed Plunge. You will come to this dungeon over here, and once you're inside, you will consume the sigil within your inventory. And that will basically start the, the nightmare dungeon. And that's stuff that you will lean into and do pretty much for the rest of your endgame cycle within World Tier 3 and, and higher and moving on. The actual sigils themselves have different levels for the dungeons. Think of them as the greater rifts from Diablo 3. And you can find more sigils within those nightmare dungeons. And in fact, I think you can craft them as well. And this will be done within Kyovashad, or at least at the Occultist, where you can find them. I don't even know if I'm saying this word correctly. This one over here, the one can, that normally extracts and imprints your aspects for you, which is something you should get into at max level over here, where you can actually change the orange text on your different pieces of gear by coming over here and you just like go like that. I'm going to add this item here and I want to change the ability to something like this. And these are all the different aspects that you get from those those dungeons within the world. So if you ever want to change the orange text, this is how you do it. But at the same guy over here, he will also have the craft sigils. Now, of course, this is going to be done when you actually have sigils. You can salvage them to get resources from one. So if you don't like a dungeon or you don't like the affixes that the dungeon has, you can always salvage it and be able to craft another one to get more so that you can try your hand at getting something that you feel like is more doable or less of an inconvenience because some of them I guess can be really difficult and annoying like Mythic Plus from from WoW. And ultimately that's what I understand of going into the end game because at first I was really confused as like what am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? Like am I supposed to be in World Tier 3? Why is everything so hard? You will need to work yourself up to World Tier 3 eventually so that you can start doing Nightmare Dungeons so that you can get better loot so that you can actually take on Tier 3 a lot better. But generally at the beginning it's going to be a lot harder so do make sure you upgrade your gear, you change your aspects, you make sure you've got a good solid build, and you should be good to go. I hope you guys have good luck. If you have any other tips for other players, let us know in the comments down below, and thank you so much for watching.